Matt Lack, everybody, the FPU. <laughs> Just a couple of quick points on Delia's comments earlier about uh, fire. First of all, I don't uh, particularly want that point uh, raising, but I will uh, make a comment on it. I uh, have the privilege of being a general secretary. Uh, I was elected to that position uh, as a London firefighter. Uh, it's always been my position that uh, union officials should not seek uh, office for uh, personal financial gain. Uh, and as a result, since my election, I've set aside a portion of my salary to fund uh, labour movement campaigns. Uh, so I don't consider that. Kind of money. So, uh, I just want to take this opportunity also to uh, mark today that actually today is the anniversary of the death of uh, a good friend and comrade of mine and uh, a comrade to all of us, Bob Crow. Uh, who, uh, participate in this debate. I'm pretty sure which side of this debate he would have been on uh, were he here today. Uh, and our uh, third point I want to make him just open him is uh, I'm very, I, uh, very pleased to be here officially on behalf of the Fire Brigade Union at this... Uh, a minute. Can we just um, stop the can and put the bucket at the door instead of interrupting Matt while he's speaking? You just keep the bucket at the door and you can put some money in there on your way out. Sorry about that, man. No problem. Uh, and I'm very pleased to be officially on behalf of the Fire Brigade Union. Our Executive Council discussed developments in momentum, and I'll come on to that in a moment. Uh, but we agreed that I should attend this event on behalf of the Executive Council of the Fire Brigade Union. I'm very pleased to be here. Conscious of the time, I mean, the if we look quickly at some of the political challenges that we face in our movement, uh, and uh, they are immense. We have austerity, and it's already been touched on, what lies behind the attacks on the, on the comrades from the Derby uh, PA, the TAs, is the austerity agenda that we are facing across public services. Uh, as a result of a global economic crisis that working people didn't create, but working people are being asked to pay the price for. We see uh, all sorts of attempts to resist this. Uh, the strike has, uh, has already been mentioned, a magnificent demonstration in defence of the NHS uh, last week. Uh, but nevertheless, currently we haven't been able to defeat the people who are attacking us. In, in uh, the UK, over 5 million public sector workers are facing an endless pay freeze where the government intends to carry that on until the next uh, general election in 2020 at least. Uh, and regrettably, the response of the TUC currently is that we should focus a strategy on identifying sympathetic Tory MPs and make a plea to them to ease up on our pay freeze. It's a strategy that will not result in success for our movement. But the truth is that the Tories do have problems and our task is how to challenge them in those problems. Brexit has been mentioned. Brexit has been stumbled into by an ill-thought-out uh, referendum launched by David Cameron without thinking through the consequences, even from his own position as a representative of the people who run this society. And Brexit and the Brexit negotiations are going to be, in my view, utter chaos. And that chaos will unfold over the next two years. The idea that they're going to rewrite decades of trade regulations in two years, I think, is laughable. We're in for a complete battle between people, them trying to protect the interests of big, big business here, and the EU states trying to represent, protect the interests of big business across the rest of the EU. And I think one of the tasks for Labour in this is to make sure that Labour has an independent, working class perspective on the whole process and make sure that the Labour movement and the Labour Party do not take the responsibility for the chaos that is likely to unfold. The, the truth is, when we come to Labour, that the truth is we do have to face up to some difficulties. We aren't doing well. I don't think currently that Corbyn's message and the message of hope that resonated so well during Jeremy's two campaigns has sunk in to our communities and has yet 
created the, the, the enthusiasm that we have shared among millions of ordinary people and millions of ordinary uh, vote, uh, voters. And there's a, a very sharp truth that I think Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell have to uh, face up to, and we have to face up to, is that no matter what concessions are made, and that no matter what nice sound bites are given out to people, the opponents within the Parliamentary Labour Party and within parts of the Labour movement will never let up in their attack on the <laughs> Just uh, earlier this week, I got an email from Emma Rees in the Momentum office. It invited me to a meeting today. It told me it was next week. It's not next week. It's, uh, uh, you know, Tuesday to Saturday is within the same week. Uh, I was a bit surprised. Well, I wasn't surprised, actually. The idea that you send a notification to a trade union four days before a meeting and saying, do you want to take up a seat on this body without explaining how you take up the seat, without explaining whether there was any election process within the trade union section on that national uh, coordinating group, I find uh, sad uh, uh, laughable to some degree. Uh, the constitution which has been imposed, we were the debate in the run up to that uh, coup was all dressed up as about being about one member, one vote. What has been created or imposed, with by the way, without any debate, without any discussion, without any right to amendment, and without any meeting even taking place. What was imposed is not a one member, one vote. Uh, in my view, the only word that sums it up actually is a gerrymandered constitution that has been imposed. I think we have to very carefully assess what we want out of this movement. We do have to look back to the fantastic initiative uh, and, and the camp fantastic campaigns that were uh, developed around both of Jeremy Corbyn's leadership mm. campaigns. A unique opportunity in our lifetime to shift politics in uh, Britain in favour of the left and in favour of ordinary people and to challenge the status quo mm. that he's put in the booties into us and into millions and millions of ordinary mm. uh, people. We wanted something different. And that's what mobilised people, people who either hadn't been involved in politics or who had drifted away from the Labour Party and also many people who fought many uh, up, uphill battles within the Labour Party to try and change things. It drew all of us together and we have to remember that as we're making, having these discussions. We also have to address and have a dialogue with Jeremy and John McDonnell and others. What do we want out of that movement? What do they want out of that movement? And clearly I think the amendment is absolutely right. We want a socialist Labour government. But in order to achieve, to achieve that, we have to take certain other steps as well. We want more socialist Labour MPs. Labour Party, and unless that is changed, a Corbyn-led Labour government will see a Corbyn Prime Minister isolated within that Labour Party, just as he is today. <laughs> Secondly, we want to see democracy in our party. In my union, the rules are quite clear. The sovereign government of the Fire Brigade Union is the conference of the Fire Brigade Union. That should be reflected across the Labour movement. Our conference should be democratic and it should set the policy that is to which uh, all Labour representatives are then accountable. And then finally, we want to see socialist policies. And there may be differences of opinion and debate around that, but we want to have a real debate about what does socialism mean to us in the 21st century. Let's have that debate and let's engage ordinary people about it. But when we look at where we stand on some of those measures, the truth <coughs> is we aren't making progress in many of those areas. Delia mentioned it in opening, the conference in 2016, the right wing of the Labour Party ran rings round the left in the Labour Party at conference. That is not acceptable. The witch hunts continue. There are thousands of people suspended or facing expulsions. There are Labour parties being closed down and it seems to go unchallenged. The rumours now are developing. Uh, an interesting point about momentum here, because one of the debates that we had when on the, I have to say, tortuous meetings that some of us sat on for many, for many months on the steering committee of momentum, where we were told momentum doesn't want to have policy debates. It's not about that, it's about supporting Jeremy, and that's fine. The question that's now being raised by some people, 
uh, Owen Jones as one, is what will happen? <laughs> Who's going to replace Jeremy Corbyn? And I think an interesting problem for those who say momentum shouldn't discuss policy is what will I they do if that were to happen? happen. Because the day. fact that they don't want democratic structures or democratic debates about policy and other matters means, in reality, people will be having those discussions, but they will take place behind closed doors without the involvement of ordinary momentum members. And unfortunately, that's the model that John Lansman seems to be pursuing uh, in momentum. And I'll say this to Jerry and to John. One of Jeremy Corbyn's great strengths, actually, what motivated people is that he is seen as someone who doesn't operate in that way. And if he allows people to operate in that way, he will lose that battle. And I say that as a friend and a comrade to Jeremy. So we have tasks in terms of organising. I think that the one fault line in the debate that took place was the importance of local groups, because the truth is, that uh, John Lansman's model of momentum sees momentum members as a source, firstly, of a lot of income, and secondly, as a stage army, or in fact, a keyboard army, of people who will click on buttons periodically. So yes, they can mobilise people to vote in national executive elections. What they're incapable of, so far, is of organising people at local level to do the nitty-gritty hard slog in the branches, in the constituency parties, to change our party, to make sure that when we're discussing who's going to be the next MP, the left has a key say in that. When we're discussing who's going to be standing as a councillor, the left has the key say in that. We can only do that on the ground, in the constituency parties, working with other Labour Party members, trade unions and so on. And I see no strategy to develop that as yet. That is the task that we need to, uh, to discuss. Uh, and on the question of the government, again, momentum has completely dodged this issue. I think the two comrades from the Derby TAs put, hit this, put this question point blank to people. If Labour councils, and we are, and Labour councils employ many of my members, if Labour councils are making cuts, there's very few ways in which they can do that. And one of the key ways that they do that is getting rid of people's jobs, and attacking people's conditions of service. And I say as a trade unionist, and I've said it to Jeremy Corbyn, that is not acceptable, whether it's a Tory council doing it or a Labour council doing it. services and the fire brigade union will stand up and fight those attacks whichever party is in power attacking us in those circumstances and I commend the campaign of the Derby TAs and others standing up in those circumstances. This is a, a live debate, we've had a difficult discussion in there this morning, we've got to discuss uh, strategy and, uh, and, and tactics uh, and, uh, and in terms of the Fire Brigade Union, I'll say this, I have reported back, because we're a democratic organisation, I've reported back in detail to our Executive Council what happened in Momentum, and I've shared some correspondence between, well, from myself to John Lambs, but he's never actually replied to our meetings. Uh, uh, and I have to say that they are pretty gobsmacked uh, at what happened in terms of the coup. Uh, and their initial, well, I want to share some of the language was said uh, about the initial uh, reaction of our executive council. But there is no guarantee that the Fire Brigade Union will have anything to do with momentum as a result of what has happened. Currently, we are monitoring events, including attending this debate, and we'll consider that uh, in the future. So we we. Uh, have huge uh, challenges. I think this is a great, uh, a, a great turnout. I think the key tasks for us are to remember what motivated us in the first place. The idea that we can create a different sort of politics that challenges the status quo, challenges the consensus of the past 35 years where Labour politicians have spouted the same sort of policies and approach as those on the other side of the chamber in the House of Commons. That's why we got behind Jeremy Corbyn in the first place. But that battle 
hasn't been won as yet. We've only just begun that fight. And our task from here today is to organise systematically at every single level, at local, regional and national level, to conclude that battle and make sure we fully transform the Labour Party to make it fit for the people who it asked to vote for it. Thank you.